glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain. And he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from the triune God who creates, liberates, and sustains us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. We encounter saints every day. Everyday saints, ordinary saints, Saints that will probably never have pictures made into icons or find their names in pages of history books, but you and I encounter saints. You and I are saints. This last week, I met, well, I've known this saint for three years. We have served at the grocery store. This dear, dear woman is... Uh, her name is Eva. She is from Eastern Europe and has been coming to the grocery store to get food for herself and for her husband. And her husband has diabetes and over the course of the last three years, he has been hospitalized many times. When I saw her just recently, we embraced and then she looked me in the eyes and she said, today if I look dazed, it's because I'm hurting. So I did not leave. <laughs> in those moments when someone, a saint who you're staring right into their eyes, tells you that they're hurting, you stop and you just stay there. And she proceeded to say that her husband, in the course of just a couple of weeks, had had to gone back into the hospital to have more of his leg amputated. And it was so hard to watch. It was so hard to be with him. And not only are they struggling financially, but they are just struggling because of just the severe pain that he is in. So we embraced probably three more times, and I have been holding Eva in my heart. A saint who comes every single Monday and sorts produce. Every single Monday, for hours is on her feet when really I wish that she could sit and she could rest. She is a saint, one who is holy and touched by God. The Greek word that usually is that we use for saint, hagios, is actually in Greek it's translated as holy. So it's an adjective. It refers to like holy things and holy people. In the scriptures, we have the Ten Commandments and we hear, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. The word holy means to be like set apart. In the Hebrew scriptures, things became holy through contact with other holy things. For instance, in Exodus 29, 37, God commands that for seven days they are to concentrate the altar and after seven days it will be holy and anyone who touches it will be holy. There's a similar command as given in the next chapter concerning items that are used for worship. You shall consecrate them so that they will be holy and whatever touches them will be holy. What makes something holy? It has come in contact with God, with the holy. 
What makes the Holy Bible? It has come in contact with God. What makes sharing bread and wine holy communion every single Sunday? It has come in contact with God. What makes the trees outside, which are stunning, by the way, the crimson red and the starburst orange and yellow, they have come in contact with God. What makes Eva holy? She has come in contact with God. And what makes me holy is because I've come in contact with her and with you and with the Holy One whose image you all bear. You know, when you think about it, I did not will myself into existence, nor do I have any power to determine the day in which I will pass on. It is only through the generosity of God that I breathe, that I live, that I exist in this world, that I can hug the Evas of this world, and I can cry with those who are suffering, and I can love everyone I meet. It is purely because of the holiness of God that I'm called a saint, not because of anything that I can do, anything that I can earn. A saint is one who is set apart from God, and I pray that today you remember that you are set apart. You are holy, because each and every day, God is coming in contact with you. God is coming to you. Today is a special day within our Christian church because we remember those who have gone before us those who have been touched by God. And it's important for us to remember them, to remember the ways in which they have left an indelible mark on our lives and we have been formed because of them. In our Bible study this last week, we read this beautiful quote. It's from Natalie Goldberg. She says this, whether we know it or not, we transmit the presence of everyone we have ever known as though by giving each other's presence, we exchange ourselves, pass on our life force, and then we go on carrying that other person in our body. Not unlike springtime, when certain plants in the fields we walk through attach their seeds in the forms of burrs on our socks and our pants and our caps, as if to say, go on, take us with you, carry us to root in another place. This is how we survive long after we are dead. This is why it's important who we become, because we pass it on. Honoring and remembering those who've gone before us is a significant way in which we grieve. Storytelling, rituals, placing flowers on a grave, framing pictures, anointing of body and blessing of body are tangible ways in which we grieve that holy one touched by God whom we mourn. For the Christian church, all saints, has ancient roots. The commemoration of the martyrs occurred on the anniversaries of their death. However, there was a time that they so many had passed on that they didn't know the exact date of their death, and so they started to have just one day to commemorate all the martyrs, which then became all the saints. More than likely, it was first established in 359 AD, and certainly by 411 in eastern Syria. So this feast is almost older than Christmas which began in the 4th century. By the 7th century, this feast of all saints started to include non-martyrs, those loved ones and family members who had passed on, and it was November 1st in England in the 8th century when All Saints was first celebrated. Generation upon generation, of faithful living saints have remembered the saints who have passed on, who have touched their lives, who have been in contact with God, and they have shared God with each other. 
Today we remember our spiritual ancestors, those who pointed us to God and helped us to notice and see the love and grace of God in their lives and in our own lives. I invite you to look at the picture that's on the front of your bulletin. It's a, a beautiful collage of icons that were created by artist and iconifer Kelly Lattimore. And look and see who, there is just who are some of these that you recognize. You can call them out. Mr. Rogers. Fred Rogers, who else? So Maya Angelou. And some of them you might think, oh my goodness, who are they? Well, I am, um, Libby was kind enough to create a little, little cheat sheet that I'm gonna put up here that after worship you can come and check out and see exactly who all of them are. But there's Julian of Norwich and Mary Oliver. There is Fanny Lou Hamer, and there's Henry Nowen. There's Mahaya Jackson. There is uh, uh, just a few others, Frederick Douglass and Ruth and Naomi and Desmond Tutu. And there's James Baldwin and Thomas Merton, just to name a few. These saints. Who would you add? Whose picture would you add to this beautiful collage of someone that shaped you, who was touched by God? Your grandma. I was wondering if we could do this. Yes, we will. I had one of those choose your own adventure sermons that I was like, if someone calls out a name, I'm just going to go for it and have an open source sermon. And if not, I've got other things written on my paper. But thank you, Virginia. You helped us go the course. Your grandma, do you mind telling us how she was touched by God and shaped your life? Everything she did, she'd say something about God. And she just lived her life. She shared, she, did, she had 12 children and married a man who had six. And so she had a lot on her mind, but she just had such faith, you know, and always, I remember all these little things that she used to tell me, and we'll never forget them. Others, a saint touched by God. Your father, do you want to tell us a little bit about him? Mm, he was, he was hard. He converted to, to be Catholic, him and my mom, and the, just before I was born. And he lived the church. And he really believed. Others. Your dad. Come, come into your Courtney. So, so my dad wasn't really a church-going person, um, but he allowed my mom to raise my sister and I in the church, and we actually had a good conversation right before he died about what he believed, and it turns out he did believe in God, I just didn't know it, and, um, and he went to church on St. Christmas and Easter. I have lots of pictures if you want to come see. Others. Yeah, Diana. Uh, the uh, grandfather that I never met because he passed before I was born is my father's father. Uh, he was a pastor, but through his writings and his autobiography and his letters to my father, I felt like I got to know him, and it was because of him and some stories of his that brought me to St. Matthew's when I talked to Pastor Kirby 
about getting married here. And um, one of the coolest was he was called in Spokane to a home of a migrant worker who was having a baby. She was in delivery at a home and she wanted to be married so the baby would be legitimate. And my grandmother urged him not to go. It was a bad part of town. It was the middle of the night. And he went. And that story really touched me that he was, his faith was so strong. And it didn't matter to him that she was an unmarried mother and he went and married her. Yeah, maybe one more. If there is. Yeah, Libby. I would love to remember my father, who was a pastor, who um, his, his faith shaped me, but it also allowed me to realize that when I'm here at St. Matthew's, I feel his spirit often. And then my mother was um, of great service and always wanting to serve her community. So I feel uh, her spirit as well. I feel any time we share stories of the saints, we should take off our feet because we're on holy ground. Because they've been touched by God. And through their lives and their love, we are touched as well. On Wednesday night, was All Saints. And Dave doesn't know this, but I stayed up until probably 1 a.m. Because All Saints for me is very special. I wrote down all the saints in my life. And then I started praying. And then I prayed, like, first I was giving thanks. And then I started praying for our world. And then I thought of all of the saints whom we will not be able to name who are a part of the great cloud of witnesses and yet even today are not having an opportunity for people to tell stories. For the 8,000 who have died in Palestine, usually there is a three-day celebration and preparation for um, when they have their bodies and they go through a whole ritual to be able to say goodbye. And for our Israeli brothers and sisters, usually to, to practice Shiva, they would sit for seven days. And right now, in Palestine, in Gaza, and also in Israel, there are bodies that are still cannot be recovered. There are stories that are not able to be told. There are generations of people who have been lost, and moms and dads and grandmas are not able to say goodbye or to remember them as beautifully as we can now but they are all holy, holy lives. And so today I give thanks for the lives that have shaped me and I honor and remember those who have perished in the crossfires of war, not just in just the last month, but throughout time. And I mourn those who are not able to honor and tell the stories. So today perhaps we pause for just a moment to remember the suffering ones, the brave ones, the holy ones whose names we do not know, but we know God knows and loves and has gathered into his arms of grace. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you gather us, the saints who are living and those who have passed on into the mystical body of your son, Jesus. We give you thanks that you set us apart, you call us holy. Even as we are simultaneously saints and sinners, it is because of your grace that we live and we move and we share this love, this contagious love. And we thank you for those who we have named out loud. We have remembered in our hearts. We have spoken their names and shared their stories. We thank you for the pictures that are here, those that are on our mantles. We are mindful that who we are today is because we have been shaped and loved by others and by you. 
And holy and gracious God, we pause and we remember the countless who have lost their lives and for whom, because of the tragedy of war, are not able to, to properly bury and care for their bodies of the loved ones, to gather and to, to share the stories and to go through the rituals and to sing the songs. And so we, we mourn with all of those who mourn. We thank you for Jesus who looked out on a crowd and he said, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. And today we find comfort in knowing that Jesus knew the reality of our life, that it is hard and it's unpredictable and we are inflicted by pain and sickness and uncertainty. And yet it is always your promise to come alongside of us to love us and to comfort us, that we might taste and see your kingdom, your kingdom now and in the life to come. For that which we cannot understand, we give to you. For that which we cannot control, we give to you. For that which which we mourn, we give to you. We give you everything because we know that our breath is not even ours. Make this day, make our lives holy. Remind us of their holiness because they are always in contact with you. Amen.